Hey, hello, and welcome back to my AuthorTube channel. I am Autumn Ashley, and today we are finishing up the outlining and brainstorming of this new shiny idea. As I'm filming this video, it's very early in the morning, but it is Friday, April 8th. It's been a few days since I've vlogged, so we've done a lot of work between then and now. I want to catch you guys up with what I have done in that time, and then where we are headed for the rest of this vlog. I worked on my secondary characters, I worked on my side characters, their relationships to my main character. I have a pretty good understanding of all of their relationships and how they're actually going to tie in with my main character. I worked on world building and what consisted of my world building was a little bit of the magic system, what kind of magic it is and who has the magic and if it can get passed to somebody else, how that process is allowed and how that goes. I worked on the society. I worked on the political system and the government since I'm trying to pull some elements from the Hunger Games. Obviously the government had a pretty big impact in the actual Hunger Games and everyday life. So I wanted to include a little bit of the government and their control of everything. I also worked on where exactly the world was before the novel started. This was actually also pretty fun too. I worked on a little bit of history and lore for the story and I felt like the history and the lore wrapped up really nicely with where the world was before this novel actually started. Now I want to break down everything that I just talked about, talk about it in a little bit more detail, my thoughts and where I was thinking about going with the things that I was writing down. I did a little bit of work on the 6th which was Wednesday. I spent the majority of yesterday, which was Thursday, April 7th, working on the story. So I will say the majority of everything that I did and that I'm going to be discussing, I worked on yesterday just to keep track of how many pages I was using to actually work on this outline. I started on page 46. The last thing that I wrote was on page 58. 12 pages worth of notes within the last two days to start wrapping up the world building, the secondary characters, the side characters, history, and the lore. I started out with the history of the story. The history as in what happened to lead up to the government, the society, the politics, the religion, for everything to be how it is. The best way that I felt like it could start was some type of war between two groups of people. In my story, it's mortals, us, and gods, which are the immortals. Eventually, mortals figured out how to get the upper hand in this war. Some of the gods ended up retreating back to the kingdom that they came from. Some of the gods were captured and then some of them went into hiding. That's pretty much where the story kind of, I guess, starts. It's been a couple of generations since this war ended. This is like the aftermath of the gods no longer fighting the people. That was like a very very broad explanation of what I worked on. There's four pages of notes for that. That's important to the story, but that's not what the story is about. So we tried to keep that brief. The next thing I worked on was this Guardians competition. The point of these characters going into this deadly competition to help serve their kingdom, why they enter into this. If they knew that they were entering into a deadly competition, why would they? I had to really think about the whys for this. I spent a whole page writing what I knew about this competition, how many trials that these characters are going to be going into for it to be a little different from how the Hunger Games is. It's not a whole bunch of teens that get together to try to kill each other. The next thing I was working on was about the magic system. Who gets the magic? Why do they get the magic? And how do they get the magic? So how did the gods get the magic? And then if it ended up transferring over to mortals, how did that happen? Were there only certain people that could get this? Why could they get the magic? How can they get the magic? I spent another page working on that whole process of how magic can get transferred certain ways to certain people, how that happens, and then what happens as an effect of actually being injected with God's magic. I continued on to the world building. I have several pages of notes for this, and there's a lot of moving parts, and all of this stuff is in the background of what is actually happening in the story. So I spent some time trying to do a little bit of research on what types of government, political systems, and societies. And so for my options for the type of government and doing research on the Hunger Games and Addie LaRue, it doesn't really specify a government system. It took place in our world. So wherever she was at in that time, that would probably just be the type of government. Specifically looking at the Hunger Games. From what I read, it was a totalitarian government. And I did kind of like 
that idea, the government having complete control over the society, over this group of people in this kingdom. Another one that I also liked was the oligarchy. So it's like a small group of people or like a small group of like military personnel who rule a certain territory or place for corrupt and selfish purposes. Those are two potentials for this story. With my story, I'm really wanting a queen on top. So I think the totalitarian would be the best for this type of corrupt government. I think as I write the story, actually start drafting, a lot of this stuff will become more clear. I'm okay with not having all of these questions answered and not having an exact full outline of all of the stuff in the background. I do have the three places that I want this story to take place, which would be the military academy, the swamp lens, because that's where the competition takes place. And then the third one would be the castle. The next thing I broke down a little bit more is who exactly qualifies to get into this military academy? What all do they have to do to be part of this? I tried to do a little research on what people have to do to qualify for our military, what steps they have to go through to just make it to basic training. And I looked a little bit in history to try to figure out what people had to do to make it to that next step. And now we are moving on to my secondary characters. I have two secondary characters that I really focused on for this. One of them, I have a lot more details than the other one. The reason why I have more for one than the other one is because I know a lot more about one of these characters because they showed up more in those scenes that I wrote a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago now. Everything that I wrote down in here, I actually learned about this character while I was writing out those scenes. So I wanted it to stay relatively the same. I went through some of the same questions that I asked for Norel, my main character. I don't think it needed to be as drawn out as the descriptions and everything that I worked on for outlining her, but I did answer some of those questions and I have two full pages of notes for the secondary character. I wanted to make sure that there were certain things that related him to his relationship to Norel and the sway that he was going to have on her in the story. So I really just focused on that and everything else I want to discovery write while I'm drafting the story. The same goes for the other secondary character. I don't have a whole lot for this person, maybe about half a page. I really focused on trying to figure out what their sway is for the main character. A little bit of the history that this character has with my main character. Like with the other secondary character, I really want to discovery write this person. I don't want to spend two pages worth of notes, three hours worth of trying to figure out who this person is. If what I was thinking doesn't quite fit into the story. I worked on some of the side characters and I really wanted to focus on for these side characters getting their name. That's one thing that when I wrote my first story, my previous project, some characters didn't have names. I felt like when I would get to those characters, I would read about those characters or have to insert them into the story. I almost felt like it detached me from the story because I would just say insert king name here or something like that. I wanted to at least give everybody a name so it could keep me in the story and these names can always change later. I ended up coming up with all the names for all of the secondary and the side characters. I did not write anything for my side characters because I don't know how much of a sway that they'll have in the story. I mean, they should have some type of sway because that's the whole point of them being in the story, but I'm not quite sure how I wanna go about that. I'm going to discovery write some of the side characters. So now, what we are planning on doing for the rest of this vlog for today and tomorrow. I need to write that scene seven. I want to work on outlining the beginning. We need to outline the middle and it could just be some of the big events, some of those big key things that happen. It doesn't have to be word for word or whatever. If there are any subplots that could potentially be popping out. I'll jot those down off to the side. If any of this kind of jumps out to me, like the subplots, any history or lore, I'll write that down too. How we are working on doing the outlining portion of the beginning, middle, and end. We are going to do the bullet point method. Now I know I said at the beginning of one of the the first, I think it was part one, where I was talking about all the different kinds of outlining methods that I could potentially use that I might be using at some point working on this whole story. I talked about doing the bullet point method and how I struggled with it the very first time that I tried it. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start chronologically and I'm going to start at the beginning and write out everything I know about the beginning, write out everything I know about the middle and then write out everything I know about the ending. And I might do the ending first now that I'm saying it out loud. So we might do ending, beginning, middle. 
that might be how it goes. Editing Autumn, jumping in here just for a quick second. In the previous clip that you just watched, I was talking about outlining the story, the beginning, middle, and end, but starting with the ending and then beginning and then the middle. I had forgotten at this point in time that I actually did briefly outline the ending of how I wanted it to go. We did that in part two of this little vlog series. So I just wanted to come here and say to disregard what I said about outlining the ending, we're not doing that in this vlog. We did that in the past vlog, but I had forgotten. And when I reviewed my notes, I realized that we had already done that. We are going to be working on outlining the beginning and then the middle now. Got it. And I think I'm gonna do this part on a Google Doc that might be a little bit easier doing it as a Google Doc. Another quick thing I wanted to say is I'm talking about here, I want to do all of this work in a Google Doc. I will eventually end up transferring everything from a Google Doc, but I do start out writing everything I know in my journal first, just to get it all written out on a piece of paper. A little bit later in the vlog, I end up putting it in a Google Doc. In the next few clips, you're going to see me writing all of this out, but I just wanted to explain that I'm writing out everything first by hand and then I will end up transferring this into a Google Doc. Just wanted to explain that because we don't get to the Google Doc quite yet. In case I need to move some of the ideas around and just having arrows all over a notebook can just get a little messy. Once I have the entire story briefly outlined bare bones bullet point method, I'm going to circle back to save the cat and just look at the beats just to make sure that certain things are happening kind of when it should be happening. And then one last thing I want to look at is the cause and effect of each of those bullet points that I have. So when I enter what's happening, but then what's the effect of what happens, I actually have to go run and do some errands before I can actually sit down to work on this. But I wanted to sit down and talk about everything while it was fresh in my head because I worked on this yesterday. But I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about for this portion and I will see you soon. You look at me like I'm crazy. When I shut my feelings out You look at me like I'm different Still you stay cause you feel something real Get so lost It is well past 8 p.m. I am ready to kick it into high gear I'm going to outline the beginning And then find some of the key points that happen in the middle And then we're gonna fill in the blanks Lush, They kinda tell me what I'm thinking I fell in love with the way we are and the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason why we stay Stay We fly around like paper planes They never know where we are I'm actually feeling really good about hitting the key scenes that are happening in the beginning and referring back to the ending that I want, at least for this first draft. I feel like I've done a lot of work understanding my main character's backstory. And I feel like that's important because all the decisions that she's making in the story leading to the next issue that's happening, literally laying the bricks to build the house that she's eventually going to knock over. I think also taking the time to understand the other elements in the world. So the world building, the academy that she's at, how things function there and how that compares to once she gets to her second destination and her third destination. I've taken two pages worth of notes on how I want the beginning to start. And I say the beginning, it's and not all of this is necessarily the first chapter or the first two chapters. I don't really know how many chapters this beginning is going to be. That's something that I hope that's not going to hurt me when I'm starting to draft is I don't really know if I should treat each of these key bullet points as a chapter or as a scene. Maybe I can just make them breaks in the story to start with. I've already started to write out some of the other things that are happening in the middle of the story. I want to kind of keep that a little bit vague. I think I've reached a good point in my outlining where now I can switch gears and start drafting. I feel like when I wrote those five and a half scenes, when I tried my pantsing attempt, it really helped set the stage of where I wanted the story to go and the scenes that are following. So maybe as I get closer to this part of the story, I might be able to see where I want the story to go next and then connect those pieces to the ending of the story. It feels right. That feels like what I should do. I feel like I shouldn't try to force this part of 
the outlining process if I'm not quite sure where I want the characters to go at this point in time. I think we're going to leave off here in the middle outlining portion. One thing also I did want to talk about with this middle portion is I'm really excited about this competition that these characters are going to be going into. It's going to be a bit different than how it is in the Hunger Games since it's not like the fight to the death type thing, but I think there's going to be three trials. Editing Autumn again. I didn't explain this first trial very well, the first go around. So let's try it again. With this competition, there are going to be three trials. The first trial, I want to pull some inspiration about that poisonous fog that was in Catching Fire, which was the second book in The Hunger Games. A while ago, I read a, an article about some mythical creatures that aren't really used in stories. There was this one thing that was really cool and had to do with moths. They leave like this dust and this dust is toxic. I kind of liked that idea for this first trial that these characters have to try to go through. Some type of poisonous fog or poisonous dust that is left by these murderous <laughs> moths. Back to the second and the third trials. And I don't know about the second trial. I feel like at one point I had something that could have been really good for the second trial, but I can't remember it right now. I have a third trial and I'm honestly really happy with what I came up with for this third trial. I thought about one of my biggest fears in nature. I'm going to write about my characters having to face not only my fear, but something that's going to be very hard to beat and also kind of scary. So we move past the competition and then what happens after the competition. I have a few bullet points for that and then that's where I got to a point where I think I know where I want the story to go. It's not quite over yet and I might just need to sit and think about it and how to connect the dots between what happens after the competition and once they get settled in this this place, this new environment, and then what is going to connect that to ultimately the ending. I think there's a few more bullet points that are going to have to happen before we get to the ending. There's some things that I need to tie up. I'm not trying to be rude, but there's also some, I think some more characters that might need to die before we get to the end. Okay, that's it. That's all we got. I'm going to keep working on this. I might check in with you guys a little bit later tonight, or I will check in with you in the morning. It is April 9th, the deadline day of trying to finish this outline. I'm very happy to say that I've been writing for the past two hours-ish, working on that seventh scene that I was talking to you guys about <laughs> for the last two vlogs. It's coming along pretty well. I had shown you guys the brief little, this little thing that I wrote to try to at least remember some of the things that I wanted to include in this scene. As I was writing the scene, I had to go back and reread the scene or two before this one because um, it picks up right where I had left off in the last scene. And I don't think I'm exactly finished with the scene. I think this scene needs, to, it needs something. It's not quite white where I wanted it to be and where I was thinking the story was going to go. It's been a hot minute since I have written a scene working on the story because I've been doing so much outlining. I think I've reached the part where now I need to start drafting the story from the beginning and then maybe come back to this one scene that I wrote. I like the scene, but I think the, the first half of this was drawn out too much. I think following the last scene where the character was just like, oh no, something's about to happen. So she got up, tried to go run to find one of the other characters. I think she spent a little too much time trying to find this character. Instead of me spending a lot of time her pulling doors and looking in rooms. I should have just had her look into like a couple of rooms and then have the scene open up to her finding this character, them being wounded in some type of way, and then the enemy closing in for the first time. I think I dragged it a little too much, which is why I feel like it's not what I was envisioning, but we're gonna keep moving along with the scenes that I was writing. We're not going to redo anything. Once I start drafting the first draft, I will circle back to the scene and see the parts that I liked of it, cut out some of it when I move it over to the first draft document and then play around with it there. Right now, I would like to move on. I need to work on outlining the entire story. So I talked about this yesterday where I wanted to do it in a Google document. I already created the Google doc, which you saw me create last night. I'm going to take the ideas that I wrote out for the beginning, middle and end. I'm just going to write all of them bullet point method-ish kind of way in a Google Doc and then 
fill it in from there. That's what we're gonna do next. They kind of tell me what I'm thinking I fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason why we stay Stay We fly around You guys need an update because it has been several hours since my last update. So at first I was having a little bit of trouble actually getting into the story. I actually think it had to do with the weather. It was like 55 degrees earlier and it was so cold. So I think I had a hard time sitting down and being warm and able to think. So I have my heater going. Once I turned that on, we started rocking and rolling. I have four pages of notes written for the outline outlining the beginning, middle, and end. Total right now of 16 bullet points with things that I want to happen under each of those bullet points. And y'all, I actually feel really good about this. I really like having the visual of everything written down right now where I can see it all. There are definitely some things trying to connect what is happening towards the end of act two to try to get it to act three. I think what's helping me is having this ending already written out and how I want the story to actually end. It's been helping me because I know the direction that the story needs to go. I think along the way there have been some subplots that have closed which is good, they have wrapped up, but I think also there are some more subplots that are getting introduced and they're not major subplots, but I think they're just enough where it helps keep the story and what's going on in the world well-rounded. I actually really like seeing all of this play out and seeing some of the other subplots as I'm literally writing the outline for the entire story and seeing where there are some parts where I might be able to sneak in some information about the subplot and some of the points that don't have a lot happening. I would say I'm about maybe halfway done with this outline. It's, I feel like it's a lot more detailed than I thought it was going to be and what I may have wanted it to be. I'm okay with that. I'm going to finish this today. It's gonna happen. We're going to be on track for finishing the whole outlining process by the end of today. Okay, we're gonna keep going. I'll update you guys later. We are in the middle of our second sprint on Bree's channel. It's a little past 8 p.m. and I have finished the bullet point outline for Project Burning Roses. I have gone through it a few times. I have tried to pick out bits and pieces of the main plot, some of the subplots that I have written down in my notebook. I put them in the outline just to make sure I keep everything in one place. But what I want to work on next, I want to plug in everything into to the beat sheet for Save the Cat, just to check and make sure I have a good flow of my bullet point method, just to make sure that certain things are a certain length or happen at a certain time. I'm going to try to plug it all in and to Save the Cat and see if it works. And if not, I will keep working at it until I have a somewhat good, strong, decent structure. I had also wanted to look at part three of Story Genius and in that specifically, there's a blue print that I wanted to look at for each each of these points. I don't know if I'm going to do that now. I feel like that can be something if I get stuck on a scene or if I'm trying to get from point A to point B and there needs to be something that happens in between. For example, some parts of my second act are very bare bones or non-existent. I might use the third act blueprint of Story Genius to work out those kinds of scenes. So I think for now we're just going to run everything through Save the Cats and if it fits, and if it looks like it can be somewhat of a decent story and has some structure, then I guess um, we're gonna start drafting. I got super eager and I forgot to say, I think my outline is as good as it's going to get right now. There's still some parts, I think, in the second act towards the end, there's a big part missing. I think that needs to connect act two to act three. I think that's something I might discover a draft or since I'm approaching the story, doing a little bit of outlining, drafting, and then going back to outlining 
drafting rinse and repeat until I get a first draft. That might be something that I go back and figure out and outline a bit based off of everything that I have drafted so far. Could probably go back through some of my original brainstorming ideas and see if there was anything that could potentially fit in that um, spot. But I think for now, we're going to just continue on with Save the Cat. I am forgetting all sorts of things to say, but I wanted to talk about my experience with this bullet point method outline. Since I had tried it in the past and I talked a little bit about how it wasn't really my thing, but I was willing to try it again. I think with everything that I've been doing with Story Genius, writing out all of my ideas, focusing on all of the characters, using Brandon Sanderson's notes and separating everybody from my character, my setting, my plot, and diving into each of those individually, and then circling back to throw everything into a bullet point method for my entire story. I think that this has been super successful. I don't know if I would still recommend the bullet point method all on its own, but I like this with everything else that I've been doing in these last few vlogs. I do like this bullet point method because thinking back to and referencing back to V.E. Schwab where she's a connect the dotser, it definitely has helped connect the dots within the story. I do think that's also been part of, I have done so much other outlining in addition to just doing the bullet point method. I like having the bullet point method outline where I have everything in one place and I can look at my entire story, beginning, middle and end, all straight through key points. Now that I have it all color coded, I can look and see what my subplots are. This is just me. Hopefully I'm not going to regret this later. I do think my secondary characters and some of my side characters need to be a little more developed before I get into the story. However, I figured out so much about my main character and mainly one of my other secondary characters when I did those scenes and I discovery drafted those. I think I want to discovery draft some of those side characters and the other secondary character. I have never had good luck in the past actually outlining characters because I feel like it made the story feel stiff and that it couldn't move around and be flexible. So I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot of outlining with the characters for those reasons. I think we're going to keep my characters more loose and let them manipulate the story and then go back and figure out what would be the best route or what are more characteristics of these people and would this actually be something that this character could do. Um, I think that's everything. Save the cat. For reals. After cup after cup Yeah, it's just the way we do it Anything just to block out the real life Last night in the stream, I was going through and reading Save the Cat, trying to put the bullet point outline of my entire story in the beat sheet layout blueprint thing, just to see if I hit some of the key points. Was there some type of flow to my bullet point outline? Could it potentially line up with how things are going in Save the Cat? All I did was just read the beat sheet, mentally put the my story into the beats that I think that they would fit into. I am happy to say that for the most part, it seems like it's a pretty good fit. There are some things with this outline and with the story that I know I'm going to have to beef up. I'm going to have to clarify and there are some parts in the second act I'm going to have to figure out, understand where they're going to push the story. And then I think once I finish the first draft, well, every draft, I think I will circle back just to make sure I'm hitting the key things that Save the Cat talks about. That's the end of my outlining and brainstorming <laughs> vlog process, the steps to try and get everything ready before I start drafting. And that's the next step. I am going to start drafting this week in the evening when we kick off our all-nighter. This is what I plan on working on for that. Well, that is going to be it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I would love it if you wanted to be part of this writing journey. So please subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.